Hello, Nick Anderson here again, editorial cartoonist and loyal employee of the fake news media. And uh, sorry about the baseball caps the past couple days. I didn't take a shower yet, so I apologize for my uh, my stench. Uh, so I'm going to be doing a little digital painting again today. Um, I already drew my cartoon. I got a little bit behind, so I didn't videotape that. Um, and so this one is a lot more complex than usual. This one took a lot longer to draw. Um, I have it in Corel Painter right now. I'm creating a separate layer for the line art and locking that so that I don't paint over that because what I don't want to do is um, is paint on the same layer as the line art because I got to separate that later on. And what you don't want to, when you do that, if it's all on the same layer and it goes into a newspaper, and the the black lines are in the same layers as the color, and they can get in the, in the same channel, and that gets off register, you get a bunch of blurry lines. It gets, it just gets into a turns into a muddy mess. So. We have to keep that black line separate in a separate channel. So anyway, I merge it all together in Photoshop later on. So I'm going to be using watercolor variants today a lot more than the acrylics. They're a little bit faster. Um, and this drawing took me longer than usual. It was inspired by the firing of Secretary of State Tillerson by Twitter. Who fires somebody by Twitter? What a low-class guy. The President of the United States is a low-class P.O. You know. I'm not the biggest fan of Rex Tillerson, but he deserves better than that. He's a decent guy. This is just not the way you do this. Strange person. I don't understand why a third of the country is okay with this, but whatever. So it seems to me that uh, we have a little game of musical chairs going on with this administration. There, there has never been this kind of turnover in history of any kind of, of any White House. People are leaving on their own, or they're getting fired. They're getting forced out. I don't know how Sessions has managed to survive. Well, we know he's uh, hard to hard to push out at this point because it's going to look like it's going to add to the obstruction of justice charge against him if uh, if Mueller is building that case, and he has a lot of support in Congress, especially in the Senate. So the ones who aren't safe, especially a reasonable guy like Rex Tillerson. Rex Tillerson was just entirely too reasonable for uh, for Donald Trump. I think he got uh, selected because he seemed like a reasonable guy, but he also was seemed pro-Russia. He was close to Russia through his uh, dealings with Exxon. And it seems to me that Trump, I mean, when you come right down to it, the only world leader that Trump never criticizes is Vladimir Putin. Why would you criticize him. All he does is murder his opponents. No big deal. Just put, murders his uh, political opponents in London. Nothing to worry about there. We need to get closer to that guy. He's our kind of guy. And good job, Republican Party, for uh, having the moral compass to uh, go along with us. Ronald Reagan would be rolling over in his grave. I used to be uh, more politically moderate. I was kind of a ticket splitter. I would often, if I voted for a Democrat for president, I might vote for Republicans for House and Senate kind of as a check on the power, because I believe in uh, checks and balances. I don't believe any power, any party should have too much, uh, too much power and influence. And if you give one party too much power and influence, they tend to uh, abuse it. 
And the last 10 years, he's pushed me pretty far to the left. I often voted for Republicans because they said they were deficit hawks. And then, as soon as they get elected, deficit doesn't matter anymore. Deficit only matters when there's a Democrat in the White House. So, kind of coming up with a uh, basic wash, and I'm going to start, I guess I'll go ahead and start laying some shadow in, and I may get the chairs, these are musical chairs with electric chairs. Uh, you can see the finished cartoon on my Petray Insight, which if you don't follow, if you don't want to follow the link, you can follow the link down below, or you can just go to www. Dang, what is it? <laughs> I should know. Patrain.com forward slash editorial cartoons. You'd think I'd know that. I'm relatively new to the site, though. Uh, I don't like. I like using blue for shading, but I'm not liking how that's looking. It's a little, a little too blue. So I'm gonna use a a gray, maybe a darker brown. And I just dried my layer. I explained that a little bit before. When you dry the layer and then you paint over it again, it gets darker. If you don't dry it, it doesn't get darker unless you use a darker tone. But you can use the same tone and it'll get darker. It just builds up. I don't know why, but I tend to work faster when I'm on tape, when I'm taping myself. Maybe I should tape myself all the time. I'll get a lot more done. I stay pretty focused. I feel like I'm being watched. Oh, I am being watched. I hope. isn't as well drawn as I would like. It's okay, but there comes a point where you just have to say, I got to get this done. I've got other things going on. I have family issues I need to deal with. can't always finish my workout as well as I'd like. And I'm also working part-time with uh, a great little uh, environmental organization, Texas Health and Environment Alliance. So that takes up a fair amount of my time. Maybe I'll get back to cartooning full time at some point, but until then, I gotta do some other stuff. All right, so that looks all right. I might add a little bit of blue in. I don't like things looking too out of the bottle. I like to see a little bit of color complexity. Incidentally, I don't have any uh, background music on right now because uh, when I have when I listen to music while I'm doing this, I immediately get copyright infringement notices. Uh, and ye yesterday, they stripped out the uh, all the audio from my uh, so you couldn't even hear me talk. What a pain! Even though it's fair use. They just sort of do what they want, and then you have to appeal. And you can get it changed, but it's kind of a pain in the butt. 
So, all right, now I'm gonna go back in and this is where I love working digitally. All right, come on, come on. Now I can erase. This is why I don't wanna work with natural media. It just doesn't have the same advantages. is just a lot faster. I love using natural media, but I don't have the luxury of time anymore. I gotta hit save. Don't want to forget that. Changing my brush size. That's what I'm doing when I go over here with my left hand. It's actually the eraser, but the eraser acts like a brush. Yeah. One thing I don't like about this version of Painter is it takes forever to change the brush sizes. I don't know why. It didn't do that in earlier versions. When you upgrade, you're supposed to get better, not worse. here a little bit which isn't always a bad thing but it's a little extreme so I'm not too anal retentive about about staying in the lines a little messiness is good but that was a little too much all right now a little bit of gray for these uh, skull cap part a little white uh, highlight on it as if it's reflecting some light. My light source, whenever I start doing the color or the shading, I have to pick a light source. I decided the light was coming in from this direction. Now a little bit darker. Too much. There we go. I'll go come back and shade it once I put down one layer. here. Switch it to a different layer. that as is so I'll color one person in and then I will end the video fix 
that. So I'm switching to an acrylic because when I use watercolors, they tend to make skin tones look really strange just because of the texture that I choose to use. And I could take that texture out, but it's just more time consuming to do it that way. So I just change brushes. So there's no texture. Sometimes if, you, if I use a watercolor, it'll look like they have a skin disease because <laughs> of the texture. It looks like they, have all, they all have eczema or something like that. So this is just a lot more uniform. And I'm going to leave him with white hair so he looks a little older. Go back to watercolor now. Add some shading in. Actually, I should have put that on another layer. I'm going to leave it though. And add shading in here too. Now I'm going to color this, whoops, I just moved the layer, I don't want to do that. I'm going to color the suit in now. So when I do that, I'm checking to see which layer I'm working on. So I'm, you can see it turning on and off. That's how I'm checking to see which layer I'm working on. I didn't bother naming it. I'm in, always in a hurry when I do these cartoons, so I don't bother even typing in a name. That would be one way to do it, is just name the layer so I know which one. But I work too fast to bother doing that. I just sometimes check to see what's uh, what it is I'm, that layer is colored. So I'm using blue there because it's a nice contrast against the brown. I'll give them black shoes. However, I'm going to use a little brown in the shading just because it kind of helps tie everything together. There's, so there's contrast, but not so much contrast that it just looks unnatural.